Let's close our eyes for a moment. Offer ourselves into the presence of Jesus. The Lord has invited us to be with him. For a God who promises us every moment in his very name, Emmanuel, I am with you. He's promising us that even today at this moment, he's with us. And he's inviting us to be with him. Lord, open our hearts and our minds to receive the power of your word. Let what you speak touch the inner depths of our heart. Purify and strengthen, we pray. Lord, you know what remains within in the deep, dark areas of our life. You know what needs your intervention, what needs your healing, what needs your deliverance. We ask you to touch and we ask you to bless. Speak to us, Lord. We, your children, are listening. We take a reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 onwards. Then Jesus said there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share. We're reading the Gospel. You can be standing. Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country. And he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating. No one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? And here I am dying of hunger. I will get up, go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran, put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the slaves, Quickly bring out a robe, the best one. Put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. The Gospel of the Lord. Mother, intercede and pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I always believe we, we Catholics, especially us Catholics, struggle to smile in God's presence. We need to learn to smile in God's presence. We carry all that burden and we keep it within our hearts. 
and it seems like as though we can't even trust him and that reflects on our faces we are in the lord's presence and yet we will not smile praise god hallelujah don't smile in god's presence the lord tells us your burdens i will i will carry but there are some of us who have this big problem even when say in india it's very famous you have the porters in the railway station they'll carry your bag they're carrying your bag so that you are not tensed about it and yet we will look at them and ask them why are you carrying the bag like this no you'll drop it now we are all the time worried about it that's the same way we come into the lord's presence and do the very same thing he says give your burdens even if we give our burdens we are still we're still so troubled praise the lord hallelujah be joyful in the lord's presence that is the only thing we have if we don't have anything else just being joyful in god's presence is our greatest gift hallelujah hallelujah we have come here to experience the lord's mercy the lord's love he wants to speak to you you know back in sri lanka there we have a very very interesting thing a lot of them they come for the retreats and and uh, they'll place right on the floor they'll place the photographs anybody from sri lanka here i know that there was or oh, they attend okay so what they do is they'll place the photographs of their loved ones all over the floor and they're waiting for all the blessings to come upon their their um, their loved ones then when we have the time of blessing with a holy water they'll have their phones and they're busy scrolling photographs of all the loved ones waiting for the blessings so during the inner healing adorations i have to plead with them and tell them please do not take those photographs this retreat is for you it is not for your children it's not for the ones who are across the oceans so the same way to you as well this retreat is for you need to get that into your system that this retreat is for me there is something the lord needs to speak to me about there's something that hasn't got in as yet there is some dark area that requires light there's some desperate area that requires hope i need to believe that praise the lord hallelujah so he has invited you true he's invited your children he's invited your family but he has invited you celebrate the invitation that jesus has given you cherish the invitation that jesus has given you praise the lord hallelujah only if you get an invite are you able to say yes or no to it if you don't have an invite you cannot say a yes or no to it praise the lord hallelujah you might have heard all these things before and yet in between all of it the lord will slip in something that you desperately need and you never knew that you actually needed it praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah we heard of how much we have a god who cares for us a god who loves us a god who focuses on us and a god who is asking us to focus on him a god who is focusing on us and a god who is asking us to focus on on him and it is when we lose that focus when our focus changes and so often there are different reasons why our focus changes the world is very very enticing it is very exciting it throws a lot of excitement perpetually we are being enticed by the world and they package it so beautifully as well praise the lord hallelujah worldliness is what satan presents to us godliness is what god presents to us praise the lord which is more interesting i can't hear you which is more interesting ah tell the truth 
you know the time when you sit for prayer your family prayer in the evening the moment you take out the rosary you know and you say in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit till that time you were watching that boring soap opera especially the indian ones where they'll show the same scene in 10 directions and then they finish that episode but not one yawn will be let out but the moment that prayer begins oh you always hear that hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed art thou amongst women blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus and even faster than the corona virus it spreads holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners everyone else so which is more interesting godliness or worldliness <laughs> praise the lord i told you you're a tough nut to crack you will still say i am not going to give you the answer you want <laughs> praise the lord well worldliness is always so enticing it is always so enticing packaged so beautifully and presented to us and that is why i always find this very very amusing you know uh, uh those of you who have that packaged bottle water can you just give me one of those So you see this this bottle of water. Now, what's inside it? I'm presuming it is water. Okay. So it's water inside it. It's supposed to be healthy, yes or no? Yes, it's supposed to be healthy. But see the packaging. Have you have you just given it a thought for how many years it's just been the same? Such a boring packaging. They never they never package it in something that will catch our eye or we are passing by and suddenly we are passing by the the um you are passing by the counters and we see the bottle of water and we think oh wow look at that let me take one have you ever thought of it that way never it's such a boring thing to even look at but have you imagined how they package alcohol the exquisite shapes and sizes those bottles come in you pass by there are people who have told me father i don't drink i've gone to their homes and there's these big bottles once i went to a person's house this is how big the bottle was and he told me father i don't drink i just love the shape of the bottle <laughs> how well packaged isn't it praise the lord hallelujah So that is how sin is always packaged beautifully to make us lose focus. When we change our focus, praise the Lord, Hallelujah. Presenting to us things of the world so that our focus changes, and when we when our focus changes, our very relationship with God is now being now being broken. It's being estranged. Praise the Lord. And constantly the Lord is looking towards us having that relationship with him to turn our focus back. We read in the Old Testament about the people of Israel who went through the Exodus. You know the Exodus story? They went out, they were taken out by God from the slavery in Egypt and then they journeyed in the wilderness for how long? 40 years they journeyed in the wilderness 40 years imagine praise the lord it usually they say scientifically they say from where the people of israel were in egypt to the promised land if they were to walk in a straight line they're supposed to meet, reach there continuously if they walked in a straight line they're supposed to reach there in 11 days they took 40 years 40 years and it wasn't easy it was tough it was hard but god was with them god journeyed with them walked with them every moment and then they reached the promised land it is supposed to be a land filled with milk and honey 
it was a land of prosperity lot was happening in the land and they were excited about what was happening in the land they saw the different things they never got in the wilderness they experienced the beautiful things they never got to experience before praise the lord it is pretty much by like when we went into the lockdown when we were released from the lockdown everyone wanted to go out we never got those things before we went and did everything we couldn't do sri lanka uh, went through its great financial crisis and at that time we didn't have uh, we didn't even have fuel so we didn't have petrol that was the time when i actually landed into into sri lanka from australia so for the first 3 months i was stuck inside i couldn't go anywhere because we didn't have petrol so we couldn't go but after petrol started becoming available then i wanted to go out and check everything out everything was interesting till that time i checked out the retreat center every nook and corner peeped here peeped there to see that's only where i can go or where i could walk and go but after that i wanted to check everything else out then i never checked the retreat center i never walked around after that i went around looking at everything else that is how they were for 40 years in the wilderness then they came into the land of milk and honey everything excited them there was a lot of things that excited them a lot of sinful things that excited them and that is when joshua who led them into the promised land he told them he saw what the people were doing that their focus had all changed from god and it had gone into the focus towards everything that excited them and he said in joshua 24:15 he says you choose today verse 14 onwards now therefore revere the lord and serve him in sincerity serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in egypt and serve the lord now if you are unwilling to serve the lord choose this day whom you're going to serve whether the gods of your ancestors the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the amorites in whose land you are now living but as for me and my household we will serve the lord hallelujah hallelujah he told them you look and you choose now are you going to serve the gods of this land that excite you or are you going to choose god where are you going to focus and that is what the lord is asking us as well where are you going to focus maybe our focus has changed over the period of time things have enticed us and you will get to hear about sin even later but things have enticed us the world has presented things that has enticed us taken away our focus from god and our focus has now been on things of the world and the lord is asking us when will you focus back on me when will you change your focus back to me hallelujah hallelujah that is what we call as repentance that is what we call as a metanoia a change a transformation where the focus changes back the focus changes back to its roots where are our roots where is your roots praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah how many of you are basically from mumbai can you raise your hands good praise the lord how many of you are basically from bangalore can you raise your hands How many of you are basically from Kerala? Can you raise your hands? Very good. How many of you are basically from heaven? Can you raise your hands? How can you be basically from Mumbai and basically from heaven as well? <laughs> praise the Lord. He's asking us to refocus. Not just not just refocusing of a few years ago. He's asking us to re focus to our very roots and our roots are in Christ i'm rooted in jesus because i come 
from Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I find it very interesting when, when you say, suppose it's in Australia, and you ask a child who has grown up in Australia, born and brought up in Australia, and you ask them, where are you basically from? And they'll say, from Australia. You know, they, look, they have Indian faces. And you say, no, but where are you basically from? From Australia. No, but where are you basically from? They will never say they are from India. They don't feel Indian. They feel Australian. The big battle is their parents feel Indian and live in Australia. So they want their children to feel Indian and live in Australia while the children feel Australian and they're living in Australia. That is where the whole battle lies. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But for them, that is all they can see. That we have been born in Australia and so I am an Australian. But at the same time, I see maybe beyond. Your color says something. Your culture says something. Maybe your parents say something. Praise the Lord. That is how we get stuck so often, just halfway. And we think to ourselves, well, I need to refocus only from there. No, refocus from your roots. Your root is in Christ because you come from Christ. We don't come from the world. We come from Christ. And if I come from Christ, I have to refocus back to Christ. That is repentance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We read the parable of the prodigal son. The prodigal son leaves the father and goes. Why? Why does the prodigal son leave the father and go? So why does the son leave the father? See, when it comes, I, I touched your ego and your ego got hurt. And see the response that's coming out. Praise God. Hallelujah. So why did the son leave the father? Because he saw something else more enticing than the father. And to, to, to use what is there, that wealth, that was enticing. He knew if he was with the father, he couldn't use it the way he wanted to use it. And so he distanced himself from the father and he went off. So now the focus is where? The focus is now on the world. The focus is on that wealth. The focus is on in, 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 in enjoying himself. And that is when he starts falling one after the other and ultimately reaches the, the pigsty. Praise the Lord. He's sitting in the pigsty. He's miserable there. And he says, even the slaves in my father's house have food to eat. Slowly, what is happening? Focus is changing back. When he was spending all that money, he wasn't thinking about the father. But now the focus is changing back. The slaves in my father's house. They have bread to eat. I'm here dying of hunger. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go back to the father. I'm going to go back to my roots. And he starts making that journey of going back to that root. Changing focus now. Sometimes you need to reach rock bottom to realize that I need to, I need to wake up. What am I even doing here? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now those of you who are sleeping, don't just wake up and say, what am I doing here? Praise the Lord. Sometimes we need to reach rock bottom. And then it shakes us up. And I hope you are shaken up. And that is why you're here. I hope you're not midway. The ones who are midway will come, go back after a week. And I don't think much is going to happen. I really hope you're rock bottom. I really hope you're shaken up in some part of your life so badly 
that you think to yourself, my gosh, I've got to wake up. I've got to wake up and I need to refocus. And he makes that journey back. That is a moment of great repentance. Where the focus is now on to the father. Imagine when he's going back to his house, that journey all the way back to his house. What is going to be there on his mind? Is it going to be the bread? But the bread is the reason why he's going home, isn't it? Yes or no? Yes. Bread is the reason why you're waiting for this talk to finish. Isn't it true? Hallelujah. When food becomes the focus, food can really grip your heart. If you're hungry, you are hungry. That is all. You just need something to eat. That's why I don't like these sessions just before the meals. It's good in a way because people are awake, because hunger keeps them awake. But it's also bad because if you don't finish on that correct time, they're cursing you all throughout. But food can do that to you. When you're hungry, it can really grip you. And at the same time, we realize it is not food that is in his mind as he is going back home. What is in his mind? My father, my father. Not just love, maybe fear. I wonder if my father is going to accept me back home. But the focus has changed and that is important. That moment of metanoia, that moment of a change and a transformation of my mind, my focus has changed from what the world has offered to what my God is offering. From what the world offers to what his father is offering. Now his mind is flooded with that repentance. Not just of what he did and what wrong he did. And so often we make this mistake of thinking that repentance is about sitting in that misery of what I've done and what mistakes I've made and thinking how, how evil a human person I am. That is not repentance. Repentance. That is just an awareness. I become aware of what I have done. That is dif different from repentance. In repentance, I'm flooded with the thoughts of God's mercy and God's love for me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because some of us come into an awareness we stay in an awareness and we feel terribly guilty. And guilt does not save. Guilt only sucks us even more further down. Repentance is a different story. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You awake? Smiling? Healed? Healed of what? I asked healed of your sleeplessness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that moment of repentance became so important for him to be flooded with the thoughts of his father. And then he goes back. Praise the Lord. That is the stage we need to get to. It's a very, very important stage. We need to get to that stage. But I'm not just aware and, and the next few sessions will, will make you aware of certain areas of sin. That awareness is a stage but that awareness is below the stage of repentance. You need to grow into that stage of repentance or you will get sucked down into the misery of guilt. And don't live in that. Praise the Lord. You know, We've been doing the online sessions from, from Colombo and last week, for the one week, we had the theme of abortion. And uh, the whole seven days, we prayed for the unborn children. And uh, uh, during these sessions, so we have an adoration, and in between the adoration, we give, a, we give a, a talk, and then we have the mass. So we had, for seven days, we had the theme of the unborn child and praying for the unborn child. 
and there were, there were so many emails we received from people who said, spoke about the abortions that they committed years, years ago, decades ago. And till now, they are struggling within. Cannot come out of it. Guilt can do that to us. Where we can, it will suck us down into the misery of our own selves, of what we've done. But repentance floods your mind and your heart with who God is and what he means to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What God is and what he means to you. Praise the Lord. For the father, in, the, in this parable of the prodigal son, for the father, the son was always a son. The son said, let me be a slave. Did the father say, yeah, come, I would like a free hand. For the father, not once does he call him a, a slave. Praise the Lord. That is what we can hold on to. We could have been in the misery of sin. We could have been in the misery of worldliness. And having been enticed by it and taken far away, our focus changed. And yet, your title as the son of God, your title as the daughter of God does not change. And so you have every right to think to yourself, I'm changing my focus from the world. I'm going to change it back to my father because I'm a child of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To be flooded with those thoughts of the Father's love is an experience of repentance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we see the Son coming to the Father and then there is a very silent moment. A silent moment of something very significant that takes place. We all remember the father, the son coming back and the, and the father hugging the son, the father running to the son, the father hugging the son and then the father telling the, telling the servants, bring out the fatted calf, let us kill it, let us celebrate, bring the ring, let's put it on his finger, bring the, the cloak, let us put it on to him, let's put the sandals on his feet, give him back all his glory. That is what we concentrate on. There's a silent, significant moment that takes place in between all this. When the father sees the son, he runs to the son. And he embraces him. Now the son is in the embrace of the, the father. Praise the Lord. And at that moment... A very silent but very significant act takes place. The son tells the father, Father, I have sinned. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Don't you think the father, having seen the son in his miserable mess, already knows that he has sinned? Yes or no? Yeah. And yet, the son had to say that. That for you is confession. That for you is confession. Now the son could have thought to himself, well, I'm in the embrace of my father. Now let me just keep quiet about all the things that I did. You know, why bring it up again? Sometimes you have this in your homes. I don't know if it's there for you in your homes. When I was small, it happened very regularly with me. I was a very hyperactive child, so very difficult to make me, make me sit somewhere that would lead me to, to cause a lot of problems. I got into trouble a lot. And when my father got angry, then you stay away. You don't want to pass... Um, you know, pathways. And we, I was brought up in Dubai and one of the problems with that is we lived in the flats. When you live in a flat, you know, you bump into each other all the time. At least over here in India, you leave the house and you can at least go out and come back. 
but this you're bumping into them all the time so the moment my father is in the living room then i don't get out of my room i have to sit inside there then when it's time for the meals all of us have to have the meals together you come you sit there quietly eat your meal get up and go and you're hoping at one morning he's going to wake up and suddenly he's going to have memory loss and he'll forget everything and then everything will be fine again and that's how we actually work it out not much is said the father whatever he needs to say he says and then if you're smart enough you keep quiet don't defend yourself don't utter a word don't blame it on your brother your sister don't do anything just shut up and sit there and just see it through and then afterwards all his anger will go down and then things will be fine again till the next episode takes place that's a smart thing to do but here now the son in the embrace of the father didn't think to himself let me just be quiet let's just get through this the ring will come the sandals will come and everything will be fine i'll even get that bread to eat maybe a bit of meat with that but no one very silent significant moment is when the son says father i've sinned against heaven and before you i'm no longer worthy to be called your son praise the lord hallelujah that moment of confession became so important dear brothers and sisters the moment of confession is going to be the most significant moment for you during this retreat your moment of confession is going to become your most significant moment during this retreat you will see more dramatic moments taking place more popular moments taking place you might hear some amazing talks that will stir your heart there might be an adoration where you will see people getting healed or you will experience healing and that will excite you you'll have a wonderful last session i know how father gustin conducts that session i was there for 7 years over here it's a time when all you parents will say ah, i'm crying my little child and you're praying over your children and those of you who didn't bring your children you'll think why did i bring my child you'll have some very dramatic moments during this retreat very exciting ones but the most significant and defining moment of your retreat is when you're going to be in the embrace of the father and you make your confession and you tell your father i have sinned and you pour it out and he in his mercy says there is no sin that you have done that is bigger than my mercy that is what he told saint faustina in the diary of saint faustina tell them that they will never be able to measure or fathom the depth of my mercy no sin of theirs is too deep or too dark for my mercy to wash it away praise the lord hallelujah he is inviting you into that embrace in the confessional he is inviting you to experience his love his mercy his grace that will flow through and then all that you felt during all these years where you felt something is not right some grace is not coming i've been going for sunday masses i've been saying my prayers but something is not sitting right some grace is not flowing through all those things that you thought something is not right that gets taken away we read in isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2 see the lord's hand is not too short to save nor his ear to dull to hear rather your iniquities have become barriers between you and your god praise the lord your iniquities your sins have become barriers between you and your god so now in the embrace of the father in the confessional what is being taken away 
those very iniquities are being taken away when the iniquities are taken away the scripture itself tells us see my hand is not too sharp to save my ear is not too dull to hear your iniquities became the problem let's take away the iniquities then you will see my hand saving and my ear listening to you and you will see responses so often in the retreat center people will come and give testimonies towards the end of the retreat and they will say we came we were sitting for the physical healing adoration we were sitting for the inner healing adoration and the lord touched us and the lord healed us it was such a powerful moment that adoration was a powerful moment that preparation for the adoration was a powerful moment dear brothers and sisters your most powerful moment is in the confessional that prepared you for that adoration that is what made the difference when with a contrite heart truly sorry for what you have done and you offered it to the lord in his embrace and the lord washed away the scars and stains of sin praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah we read in the letter of saint james chapter 5 verse 16 letter of saint james chapter 5 verse 16 therefore confess your sins to one another pray for one another so that you may be healed confess your sins to one another pray for one another so that you may be healed confess your sins and there the iniquities will be taken away the mercy of the lord is flowing through where god's mercy is flowing there will always be healings there will always be miracles praise the lord hallelujah 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 a person came here for a retreat and when he came for the retreat came in a very difficult situation connected to his family his marriage his business all in total tatters and having lost everything he's come here as a last stage of his marriage he's come here for the retreat and i remember it was on the second day of the retreat that he came and he came to me and he said i want to leave and i want to go i don't want to be here and i don't feel very comfortable here and i told him have you made your confession he said no i'm not going to make any confession i said go and make a confession and he described it to me later and said he's far taller than me a friend of mine now and he he looked at me and he told me later he said you know that time i looked at you and i thought to myself this tiny little thing telling me how dare he tell me that that is when i realized what you people think about me <laughs> so, praise god <laughs> and he made a confession and the life his life the lord changed it around in an amazing turn around blessing his marriage blessing his family blessing his business all these all these these this granite that you see in all the halls has come from that man when he promised father gustin that he will do this this hall was the first one that was done and when he promised father gustin that he will do this he had zero in his bank account he had no quarries at all and his wife asked him what on earth did you go and promise he had nothing today all the granite that has come in this retreat center has come from him praise the lord the miracle took place when a man wanted to leave and go and he was led into the confessional and the confessional changed his life let the confessional change your life let the confessional transform you when you go to a priest as jesus has has said as he told the disciples in john chapter 20 22 and 23 the lord told the disciples peace be with you 
as the father has sent me so i send you when he said this he breathed on them and said receive the holy spirit and then he told them if you forgive the sins of any they are forgiven them if you retain the sins of any they are retained praise the lord if you forgive the sins of any they remain forgiven if you retain the sins of any they remain retained same said in matthew 18 18 the same said in matthew 18 18 so the priests the apostles the first bishops of the church through the laying on of hands they're passing on the faculty to forgive sins um in the confessional to the priests and the priests are being blessed with this gift they are being given this treasure to hold and to exercise to bring healing into the heart of god's people let us read second corinthians chapter 5 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation St Paul the apostle is talking about who has that ministry of reconciliation All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation st paul in that context is speaking about his ministry and he says as christ has given us the sacrament of reconciliation ministry of reconciliation so when you go for your confession and you are there in front of a priest remember who you are standing in front of praise the lord hallelujah remember who you are standing in in front of remember who you're kneeling in front of praise the lord hallelujah who do you see there who do you see there oh how can you see jesus do i look like jesus to you who do you see there you see the priest who do you experience there you'll experience jesus praise the lord hallelujah St Faustina in a diary says beautifully in 10 1602 that's the paragraph number 1602 she the, um, the lord tells her when you approach the confessional know this that i myself am waiting there for you i'm only hidden by the priest but i myself act in your soul I myself am there I'm only hidden by the priest Praise the Lord Hallelujah He would go on to say that he's the priest is there as a screen the person of the priest for me is only a screen but I stand behind Praise the Lord So when you go for your confession remember who you're going to So you don't have you don't have to butter up or sugar up your confession. You don't have to cause a good impression to the priest. It doesn't matter. We are not going there to to get marked for the amazing retreat you had and to say you know what an amazing saint you are. No we are going there because I'm sinful. I acknowledge that I'm sinful. I acknowledge that I've changed focus. So I go and I offer to the Lord who tells me, my child, you're carrying this burden for so many years. Give it to me. And walk away free. Give it to me and walk away free. So don't go to cause an impression there. Don't go to make an impression. Don't butter it up. don't sugar it up tell it as it is don't say i hate my mother in law because you know father how these mother in laws are i'm presuming most over here are mother in laws you didn't like that statement praise god she was so rude to me and therefore i did what i did that's a nice sugar up way of saying your confession do you hate 
say that I hate because I have fault in me. I made a mistake because it is my fault. I'm not here to blame the whole world about why I did what I did. All I'm focused on is the mercy of God. That is my celebration. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you go to the priest, don't be disturbed by who that priest is. Does he know you? Does he not know you? Don't do that. The priest gives the forgiveness of sins based on what the Lord has given him in ministry. When he's in ministry, he's a different person. When you have the priest here at the altar for the mass, we say the priest is in persona Christi. That means he is in the person of Christ. So even if he's not a very holy priest, the sacrament becomes valid. Because he's in the person of Christ as long as he is celebrating the, the sacrament. When the priest is sitting in the confessional, he is in persona Christi. So don't have to worry who that priest is and what they'll think about you because they know you. So don't go around standing there picking and choosing your priest for confessions. Don't look at each priest, size them up. Look at one who's sitting there and think, oh wow, look at that, what an angel. He's so kind. The penitent is smiling, so I'll go. Or look at maybe Father Michael sitting there and all the penitents are crying. And they think, oh what a devil. I don't know, I'm not going there. Don't. The Lord said this to St. Faustina. Beautifully, he said this to St. Faustina. Never analyze what sort of a priest it is that I'm making use of. Open your soul in confession as you would to me and I will fill it with your light. Don't analyze who the priest is. Just open your soul and I will fill it with my light. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear friends, make a good confession. Then you will start seeing the greatest of miracles happening in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.